Hello, good evening everybody, it's Cathy here. How are you tonight? Um, tonight I wanted to talk to you about the two thought systems of, of love and fear and or you could look at it as love is like coming from your infinite self and fear is coming from your small self. This is something that's been coming up, I've been doing this quite a lot recently, um, exploring this uh, infinite self, small self, and it's so, so powerful. So do listen through to the end and, um, you know, th there's so many, it's a fantastic tool. So um, let me know how you get on. So small self or infinite self, these are the two kind of operating systems that we work from in any given moment. And just to define them like the small self is that part of us that it's um it's uncertain it's fearful it's got that sort of contracted sense um so it feels small a bit sort of uh, constricted it thinks in limiting ways it tends to lack trust uh, lack trust that there's something bigger running in the show and it has a real need to control outcomes because it and it believes in lack and scarcity it's really doubtful um, when you're in your small self you tend to lack self-belief and you don't feel that you've got the power to change your circumstances it's got a really narrow perspective of the world and it often feels alone you know like um, like you're unsupported like you've got you've got to use force and effort to get things done or to make things happen and um, often it runs that story that if you want to get something done then you've got to get it done yourself so it doesn't trust this um, the, doesn't trust the flow of life at all it it feels itself as as separate and and it also resists life situations that are unpleasant and uncomfortable now it's it's where most people actually operate from. So, you know, this is the mass consciousness. So it's really easy to find yourself falling into those thinking patterns and believing in that lack and limitation because nearly everybody does. So it's sort of expected. In fact, if you, you do uh, come more from your infinite self, which I'll talk about in a second, when you stick your head above the parapet and you really choose this other way because you've discovered that there is a choice, you're very likely to be considered quite delusional, you know, thinking that in all possibilities, because other people just don't think like this. Uh, and people who habitually live from the small self, they're really uh, much more ready to pull you back to their reality or their worldview because they tend to uh, listen or to their what they're hearing or believe what their eyes are seeing and believe that's real you know they um, <clears throat> they react to what what they're what's in front of their eyes uh, and they there is sort of react to life circumstances and and uh, that that's when they believe they've got no power to change things they make conclusions about how things are or how they are or this is just who I am and I can't change so there's this sense of being fixed and they tend to make do with how life is and just accept those limitations of life and, and sort of live within them so it's like living small without challenging without pushing at the edges very much uh, if at all so it's really living safely inside that comfort zone but the small stuff it's really just an identity built upon all the stories from the past and it, it this is just an illusion it really doesn't have any real substance the biggest illusion of all that we buy into is that what we see and perceive with our senses with our eyes our ears and you know our the touch and taste and all our senses we kind of believe that what we perceive is truth that it's real and solid and that all of these forms that we see are separate from one another including our bodies and even though physicists all agree that everything in our physical world is actually made up of 
organized pockets of subatomic particles rapidly popping in and out of existence, which creates an illusion of solidity, we still buy into the illusion. And we, you know, we tend to only believe what we see with our eyes as, as the only reality. And this, just to sort of explain it a, another way, this idea of um, of energy and particles popping in and out of reality, it's a little bit like when you go to the movies and you sort of willingly buy into that illusion that what, what you're seeing um, is smooth, continuous movement. When in actual, like sort of a film, and when actual fact, what you're watching is a series of 24 still frames per second it's just but it's just an illusion and, and that's the same thing when we look at things that are fixed and solid in our lives we assume that it is fixed and solid and that that's how it is but but it's the illusion it's not it's just energy that's moving in and out of reality and we have all kinds of possibilities to, to change these so if you could change anything about your reality if what you experience in your life isn't fixed if you could make a new choice if you could choose a much grander greater vision for your life because that was possible what would you choose you know how could your life be different if you decided that something else was possible and that you know nothing is fixed at all and that you're not fixed you're not fixed in your um, patterns and programs. You can be whoever you choose to be. You know, when, as you tune into that, can you really feel a sense of expansion as you sort of consider this idea? And you know, nothing is fixed, and you until you choose it, or until you decide that something is so, until you make some sort of conclusion that fixes it into reality. And this could be something that's really empowering. You know, rather than the and limiting story so you get to choose what you create so your infinite self on the other hand is who you really are you know it's the consciousness that connects everything it's that infinite organizing intelligence that moves energy and it moves these subatomic, subatomic particles which are the building blocks of the universe it moves them into all these organized separate seemingly separate forms but the essence or the energy of the universe it's pure unconditional love and light and it's unlimited abundance and it's pure creative power within this energy within this infinite self there's no lack or scarcity that because it is all that is you know there is nothing that it is not and uh, everything exists as potentiality. So all things are possible. Even the things that you haven't even yet imagined all exist on, on one level in this unmanifested form. And you can tune into it and tap into it. And, um, you know, it isn't just me saying this. This, is, this isn't just airy-fairy uh, spiritual kind of ideas. This is quantum physics. Science has been catching up with what the mystics have known for thousands of years. So why is this awareness and knowledge useful? Well, when you access your infinite self and you choose to make decisions from this really vast perspective, you're tuning into the guiding intelligence of the universe. And, it, and it's that which knows what you were born for and it knows what would be an aligned choice for you that leads you towards your potential. When you start accessing your infinite self and you start making decisions from this place and, and that guiding intelligence of the universe is sort of moving you towards what, towards your potential, um, it's like it knows, in the same way that it knows how to grow an acorn into an oak tree, it knows what you're born to grow into, it knows your potential, it knows how to move you forward. And the only thing that uh, keep, that is different, really, is that we have an ego and we have free will. And the ego loves to avoid anything that's too painful or that's uncomfortable. 
which is obviously what we need to go through if we're going to grow and if we're going to sort of step into who we're born to be. But it's in this place where smallness and your infinite self, they kind of get into a dance, a bit of a tussle. And the challenge is in discerning what choices are or um, ideas come from your small self and which come from your infinite self, which are the ones that lead you to so much more uh, joy in your life, much greater love, more satisfaction. So how do you tell the difference between the two thought systems? Because quite often it's, it's really confusing. Well, typically when you're coming from your infinite self, you'll experience much more of a deep sense of knowingness. It's like a felt sense. Um, and it's, so it's more of an embodied feeling rather than like localized in the head. And it will usually feel really light and expansive and open and full of possibility. It will generally be loving, encouraging, peaceful, wise, and it will come from the heart. And it will often require courage, you know, it's, it's not always um, comfortable. So, you know, because the, this is where you're going to be stretching and it's going to be moving you into who you're here to be. So frequently a choice made from love or your infinite self, it, it comes with a, an attitude of curiosity and playfulness about how something will turn out. And usually it has a, an underlying sense of joy. So it's not serious or heavy and it allows for things to unfold not needing a definite outcome, it, which is what the small self usually wants, which wants certainty. It's so much more concerned about the experience of the moment um, rather than reaching a destination. And when you're coming from making decisions from your infinite self, you can, it's like you're tapping into something that inspires trust in the greater flow of life. And it's that part of us that always wants to grow and evolve into the best version of ourselves. So choosing from here is when you're actually connecting to divine energy, you know, and it, it creates a sense of gratitude no matter what shows up. When you're in that place, it's like um, there is nothing that is wrong. It, it's all, everything that happens is meant to be. It's in alignment because your soul chose it, it's there for you to either learn from or grow from or enjoy. Um, on the other hand, choosing from your small self creates a sense of kind of being separate from the divine. And um, and it's that small self that, that as I was saying, it needs to control the outcome. And that small self, it often says, yes, but I don't know how, I can't because, you know, it's got all of these excuses, it judges, it compares, it's always trying to improve itself from a place of kind of not enoughness and it need, has this need to be right rather than to know the truth. So you can see that these two different parts are like they've got very different motivations. So how do you uh, use this awareness or when would you use this awareness? So quite often it's it's in relationships for example um small self tends to worry that, about how you'll be judged or perceived so it really tends to hold back showing its authentic self uh, and, and when you can recognize this that's when you can make a different choice you can decide to show up in your greatness and be who you are and communicate more clearly and define your boundaries more clearly and, and have more confidence to do that and to love more openly. Um, in your business or your work, if you're operating from your infinite self, it's really gonna help you to take aligned action and to know what, out of all those dozens of different ideas that you might have, what to act on, what's in alignment, or what might be something that, that distracts you or, or you know something that might sabotage you, because that's what the small self will do. And if you, if you listen to what you're saying in your head when you're kind of doing those distracting things or the sabotaging things, you can, be, you can pretty much guarantee that it will be coming from your small self. So when you notice it, just acknowledge that it's your small self 
uh, acknowledge that that's not the truth of who you are, that it comes from your story, it comes from um, things that you've picked up that probably not even yours a lot of the time, energies and um, beliefs that you've picked up from your family when you're growing up that was more to do with, with your parents than you, but you've just taken them on. You know, all of this we can let go of because it all comes, all this small self stuff is nothing to do with us. We are infinite beings in physical form and we're here to live our greatness and we all have the capacity to do this. So another, and another great thing to do when you acknowledge that infinite part of you, if you're wanting to move your business forward, you want to, to make a greater contribution into the world, you've got projects that you want to um, expand and grow, is it you can, before you might want to, um, if you're doing some kind of public speaking or like, like I did on this, like I'm doing on this live stream, tuning into that infinite self and that sense of expanding yourself out and feeling that part of you that's connected to source. When you do that before you speak or before you write a blog or you write some copy uh, or before you work with a client or um, before you do a discovery call with a new client, it's a really powerful way to uh, align yourself with, with you know, your highest good with and with the highest good of the people that you're connecting with. Very, very powerful. Um, small self. Small self loves to use an excuse and it often uses things like um, health and health issues and money issues or, you know, lack of money. These are because these are really accepted. Um, uh, what's the word? They're really accepted reasons for not moving forward on your mission. Um, but really they're excuses because if everything is just energy and we are in control of that and we can change um we can change what our reality is through our choice and you can choose to move beyond that so if you don't have the excuse of lack of money or or poor health what might the real reason be that you're not moving forwards and when you look at those blocks from that perspective it tends to open out a whole new level of awareness I found when I was looking at my money issues over the past few years, I would I discovered things like fear of overwhelm, like what if I got successful? What then if I couldn't cope with, um, you know, what people wanted from me? Um, I discovered lack of re um, fear of rejection. What if I stepped into this like spiritual woo woo side? People would judge me. They'd tell me I'm a nutcase. All of that kind of stuff came up. And um, another thing came up, which was oh, a real deep thing of like, I don't have a right to exist or in order to um, justify my existence, I have to work really hard. So all of these limiting beliefs, they exist under these excuses that we tell ourselves are totally legitimate. But when you dig a bit deeper, it all falls to pieces and you find the real limiting beliefs and then you can clear them so and tapping into the, your infinite self um, and she, making a different choice rather than believing the story it helps to break those stories down it helps to um, it helps you to like clear them checking first your kind of motivations in your within your head what's um, you know the, the thoughts in your head where you're coming from when you when you check your motivations, you can tell are you coming from your small self or your infinite self, and um, also check with the body because the body never lies. When you're coming from your infinite self, it will feel light and expansive and open. And if there is something that you're considering, it would it possibly feel a bit spongy rather than a solid wall because you know even if you're feeling a bit of apprehension, it it will feel like you could push through that. Whereas if something is out of alignment, it will tend to feel heavy, contracted. You'll probably uh, be running it around in your head a lot. So it will feel sort of come from logic and it will feel a bit more like a brick wall. Um, you know, it's, 
but if you push through that it will take a lot of energy but you can push through it it just will take you in an opposite direction than where you want to get to so there are loads of ways that you can use this awareness to really open up greater possibilities in your life and get much more into alignment with your soul's path so that you can enjoy this beautiful journey through life much faster and if you'd like to explore how this could be for you and you'd like to have a conversation about how working together could help you open up to a much greater level of abundance and joy and love and a much deeper sense of satisfaction in your life, then do please get in touch and why not book in for a possibility cause completely free. And I'd love to know how this resonates with you or if you have any questions. So drop me a comment in the box or get in touch with me um, at my you can contact me by email if you've got any questions that you'd like to have me answer personally you can catch me at kathy at kathyballard.com and i'd really love to hear from you so i will see you next time take care bye for now